so I'm joined here by Dustin Kirkland. Dust Dustin is an engineer in the Ubuntu um, server team. So he's going to tell us everything cool that the server team is working on. Everything is a tall order. Yeah. Um, I can mention some of the things that we're doing right now for uh, Ubuntu 11.04, the Natty development cycle, um, mostly the, the blueprints that, uh, that our team is working on, um, some of the individuals who are contributing to those um, in no particular order. Cool. Um, we're working uh, quite a bit in the virtualization space. Uh, that's, that's been a, a hot point, a focus point for Ubuntu for some time. Containers is one thing that's on our roadmap, LXC, Linux containers. Um, a couple of our teammates, uh, Serge and Chuck, are working on trying to get Ubuntu booting inside of an Ubuntu container. Uh, working very well. It's, uh, it's a high performance, um, high density virtualization, semi-virtualization uh -huh. solution. Um, Surge is also uh, owning our, our virtualization hypervisor stack now, so Lipbird and KVM, okay. um, those bits and pieces. Uh, so just sort of housekeeping and keeping that up and going. Um, James, one of our, our new teammates, is uh, working on uh, some housekeeping around the Java. Uh -huh. Java so all the, all the Tomcat and all the, you know, the interesting Java servers is being uh, well maintained today? I think so, yeah. We, yeah. We've never really had a dedicated person or a person who spent their, their you know, full time and uh, assigned time working on the Java so stack. That's good news for everyone who cares about Java. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. Awesome. It's good news for those of us who yeah. didn't really want to work on Java. Yeah. But we've got uh, someone who's excited about it. So. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, packaging Java is a, is a, takes a special skill, yeah. and caring yeah. about it and feeding it. Um, James is also working quite a bit with Hudson uh, mm -hmm. and uh, EC2 and doing some continuous integration testing, um, the uh, server ISO testing, something that... So that, that means that when you guys produce a new ISO, it gets you know, automatically installed and tested for all the major right. features. That's, right, that's what we're working toward. Um, and, and James is, is owning that blueprint um, using Hudson and EC2 to so continuously test. Yeah, and that helps you know, make sure that our images are always rock solid and Right. Okay. That's right. great. Yep. And it's the sort of thing that we invest heavily now, and hopefully this is the sort of thing that just runs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a monkey in the background yeah, all the time. Definitely. So, um, we're also uh, working on Upstart. Upstart's been uh, been a, an, a, an amazing init system for mm -hmm. Ubuntu for some time, and it's it's taken some time to get to the point where it is today. And uh, from time to time, we've run into issues on on the server side, certain yeah. things that uh, um, don't work like traditional system. So upstart is like the, the thing, the, the startup sequence that makes Ubuntu boot so fast. Right. So what are you guys working on? You know, how are you improving it? It's already so fast. Well, yeah, so the, well, um, it, it's, it is very fast. Uh, some things don't always work as well as, mm -hmm. as you would hope. Uh, it, the, the model is quite a bit different than the traditional mm -hmm. SysB init process. Yeah. Um, to some extent, we're really just filling a lot of gaps in the documentation, the examples, you know, someone who's a developer or a third party party is going to write a, 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 a new service, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, today we, we write in uh, upstart scripts, the yeah. traditional init script has been around for quite some time. So That's awesome. Uh, filling some gaps in, in the documentation and the examples there. What else? The cluster stack, I think, is quite interesting. We have a, a new team member on the Ubuntu server team as uh -huh. of this week, uh -huh. uh, Andres Rodriguez. Uh, he's working on uh, the cluster stack. He's been a member of the Ubuntu HA community for some time, mm -hmm. recently joined. Yep. Um, but the cluster stack, I think, is in better shape than it's ever been before. And part of that's pulling in new versions of the various packages. So now we, we have a dedicated resource making sure that the cluster on Ubuntu server is, again, rock solid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great news. Um, yeah, so he's been um, filing and filling MIRs, trying to get the cluster important cluster packages into main, uh -huh. um, fully supported. Uh, fixing various uh, various bugs and package uh, mm -hmm. package bits. Um, Andres is also working on um, some interesting enhancements to the PowerNap uh, package. Can you tell Ubuntu. us more about that? Yeah, so so Power, PowerNap uh, has been around Ubuntu for a couple of releases now, and mm -hmm. it's it's really the way that, that we're trying to to lead and innovate on the energy efficiency uh -huh. of Ubuntu servers. PowerNap's if you think about it conceptually, it's like a screensaver that runs on, on servers in your data center, right? Yeah. So instead of like blanking the screen to, to you know, so you protect your screen, yeah, yeah we're, we're taking these servers and bringing them to a lower power state when they're deemed to be uh, un, unutilized. And how does that work? Well, so the, the, the key thing that Andres has changed is that uh, up until this point, PowerNap has supported 
uh, various actions, you know, what to do when the server is is underutilized, okay. right? And previously, that, that um, hierarchy of actions looked like, well, if you define something to do, do that. If mm -hmm. you, the administrator, know what you want to do with a binary or a script or a program, run that. Yep. But if you haven't defined that, in most cases, the user um, you know, takes the distribution default. Mm -hmm. We try to suspend the system, so S3 yep. suspend to RAM. Um, if that's not supported, we try to hibernate the system. Okay. If that's not supported, at that point we would try to power off the system. Uh -huh. Well, um, one thing that we conceived of a while back but had never really gotten around to, and Andres did this as part of his uh, part of his graduate student work before he, he joined us full time. Uh -huh. But he's created a, a yet another state, which is a power save state. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it has some interesting advantages to it. It's interesting because the system doesn't always go, you know, disappear from the network uh -huh. in the way it does when it suspends or hibernates or powers off. Uh -huh. It stays up and running, but we do as much as we can possibly do to the system to uh, to reduce the power consumption. So okay. we, we power off uh, all the CPUs except for one. Mm -hmm. We spin down the disks. We turn off uh, the various um, you know, the sound card and, and various peripherals that. Okay aren't necessarily needed. On a server side. Right. If the server's still up and listening, it, it will be running in a, in a slower state. So it oh. might you know, respond to uh, heavy, uh, like an influx of web traffic, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit slower than when it's, it's running at, at full bore. But we're seeing 15 to 25% power savings mm -hmm. in that scenario. Um, so that's real interesting. We just yeah. uploaded that to Natty today. That's awesome. So if you're building a cloud or data center and you care about power usage, then you know that's that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah that's really awesome. Um, so uh, Scott and our team's been working on the the UEC images, the images that we provide for Amazon EC2, uh -huh. as well as our Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud. Um, we he continues to update and improve the uh, the Ubuntu server images, uh -huh. uh, integrating things like uh, like Grub, actually in the image self serviceable kernels. You can actually. Uh, update your kernel now in, in your UEC or EC2 inst instance, yeah. reboot that instance and run a new kernel. So pre previously kernels. the kernel was like controlled by Amazon, so you can't right. really upgrade that, right. but right now you have, it, it's like a yeah. normal bare metal server. Yep, absolutely amazing stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've also been working a little bit on actually desktop images that are cloud compatible. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which is really neat, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not quite to the point where we're ready to, to demo it for everyone yet, oh. but we're getting uh, ever so close. Our hope is to be able to allow people to uh, test drive a, a Unity-based yeah. uh, Ubuntu 11.04 system uh, in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, so without having to install it, run it local, uh, you fire up a web browser, yeah. uh, system runs remotely, and uh, you've got a, a client that's, that's, that's driving your own Ubuntu desktop system using the new Unity interface uh -huh. you know, in the cloud. That's, that's similar to the Cloud 10 program that we launched, like with the uh, Maverick release? Uh, and, something like that. Yeah, yeah except we, for desktops, which is you know pretty cool if you want to demo Ubuntu in a local event, for right. instance. Yeah, then you, you have the uh, the chance to just spin up desktop images and you know give it the chance um, for people to try them out. Right. Um, so one of the other exciting things I think we're doing, and we're, we're really uh, uh, very much a, a, a whole team effort, but we're working on an overall uh, strategy for uh, Ubuntu server deployments, which we're, for lack of a better term, we're calling it the um, the installation and configuration service, right? But there's there's a, a suite of open source uh, packages and projects that are are in the space of uh, deploying Linux on bare metal hardware and then managing it thereafter. Okay. So we, we've. We've sort of defined the five pieces we believe that we need to get this working well. The first one being the network installation piece, uh -huh. and um, we we uh, meticulously analyze a number of different open source projects, and uh, we settled on uh, a project from Red Hat and Fedora called Cobbler, mm -hmm. which uh, I think a lot of Linux yeah. administrators are aware of. It's never really run that well on Ubuntu, and it's uh -huh. never really deployed Ubuntu very well. But uh, we spent quite a bit of time this cycle so far working with the upstream Cobbler community, uh, uh, submitting patches back to them, trying to get Cobbler able to deploy Ubuntu systems um, as you know one of its targets, but also run Cobbler on an Ubuntu um, mm -hmm. server. So you know our goal here, you know, we think if people are going to deploy clouds on Ubuntu, yeah. they're necessarily going to be deploying dozens of systems or mm -hmm. multiple systems. Yeah. So network installation makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Walking up to each system and popping in a CD or a USB key just yeah. doesn't scale. Mm -hmm. um, so the installation service is quite important. We're working with Cobbler to do that. Hopefully we'll see a Cobbler package land 
and then moving to the next few days uh, or weeks. Um, another piece of that, though, is being able to efficiently mirror or cache the, uh, the, the packages and the, um, uh, the, the data that's needed by the redundant cloud nodes. You know, you've got all these nodes you need to do and have to get update, upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to you know, go out past your network firewall at that yeah. point to do that. Once you've pulled it locally, you should be able to you know, take advantage of your gigabit or 10 gig network, uh -huh. right? Um, so we've analyzed a number of different mirroring and caching solutions. We'll have one bundle as part of this that we'll recommend as the same default. Of course, you yeah. can opt to use anything else in the, mm -hmm. in the traditional Ubuntu way, yeah, right? Sure. Um, triggering those installations uh, is another important aspect, being able to use something like Wake on LAN or IPMI mm -hmm. to remotely, uh, remotely ping a system. Yeah, to power it on, boot Paxi and, you know, do its thing. Exactly. Um. So that's, that's all part of this. It's all part of this um, this effort, uh, but then what do you do once the system is installed? And that's the configuration management. You know, uh -huh. now that you've got an Ubuntu system, or you've got dozens or hundreds or perhaps thousands of, of these systems, uh, how do you go about managing them, rolling uh -huh. out uh, updates, to, uh, rolling out one global configuration change? Mm -hmm. um, and again, we we analyzed a number of different uh, options, and at this point, Puppet seems to be the the, the industry best and the, the, the tool that meets our need uh -huh. most and what we see a lot of our users uh -huh. using. So um, I don't know how much of this we'll get to this cycle, but we have a roadmap that, that shows um, quite a bit of effort that we would build upon after you know post-installation or, or at installation time, taking care of the federation required for a, mm -hmm. a puppet system, you know, the, the various pieces of, of a puppet managed yeah. network. We'd like to get that integrated into the, the fundamental installation of yeah. Ubuntu servers. That is know? that is a major project, you know, this this whole uh, automation thing. Right. So, yeah, it's like so. Um, so is this integrated with UEC as well, or it will. So we, we we will look at UEC as being like the key test case mm -hmm. for for this this project, right? Mm -hmm. The the goal of this will be to deploy UEC and deploy UEC very well. Yeah. Uh, but UEC being one of many different Ubuntu based. Uh, server installations that might happen. UEC is a great candidate because you, you can install one and two system uh, UEC clouds, but ultimately if you're really, you know, in, in an enterprise you're going to use this, yeah. it, you're going to want to do it extensively in, with many, many different systems. Yeah. So then after the system's configured, the last two pieces we're calling uh, monitoring and debugging. Mm -hmm. So um, now that your systems are configured over the course of time, they need to be monitored, uh, and there's a number of open source packages that We'll look at for that, you know, things like Nagios and and uh, Newton, um, as well as our Syslog, Collecti, you know, all the different things that will will um, over over time allow you to monitor the state of your network. And uh, we're in the early stages of, of uh, you know that we're looking at that a little bit further out, probably an eleven ten deliverable. Okay. Um, we'd like to have a package that at least so that we can then do a full analysis of it for eleven ten, mm -hmm. and then the debugging pieces. You know, when something goes wrong, when the monitoring uh, reveals something that, that's going on, oh, uh, you know, tools like M Collective or, or even just having convenient SSH access yeah. into those. So that's, that's that whole installation configuration yeah. management service. We don't have a, a real good handle for that piece, but uh, yeah. that's a little bit about where I think the Ubuntu server will, will be proceeding over the next year, year and a half, and hopefully rolling up to a, another excellent. Uh, LTS for 12.04. Exactly, yeah, that sounds like very interesting work that the Open Server team is working on. That's that's really great. Anything else you want to tell us about? Um, that's, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> okay. We'd for people to get involved, you know. Okay, so how, how can people, you know, uh, reach you guys? Uh, well, I think uh, the place that's probably the, the most dynamic and most immediate is mm -hmm. our IRC channel. So okay. the traditional irc.freenode.net. Uh, pound Ubuntu server, uh -huh. uh, Ubuntu dash server. Yep. Um, most of us are in there. Um, I'd say from early morning European time to late evening U.S. time, uh -huh. uh, there are people around to help or discuss. You can also um, get on the mailing list right, for any questions. Yep, or? absolutely. Ubuntu server mailing list. Um, my my nickname, my handle is Kirkland. So okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Definitely.